marriage helped boost Monaco's image and economy. Rainier's determination to modernize the country and create an alliance with America via his marriage changed his own former image as a playboy and reckless royal while boosting Monaco's tourism, just as Aristotle Onassis had predicted. During the 1960s, Monaco became a tax haven for other wealthy tycoons, as well as an exotic international tourism destination. He also revived the distinguished auto race, the Grand Prix de Monaco, and after a brief financial crisis, in the early 60s he had regained control of the principality's business dealings and revived its commercial and real estate markets. Onassis had a hand in many international business deals. Aristotle Onassis was a huge player in the business world long before he became one of Monaco's most powerful figures. The Greek shipping tycoon began with his own cigarette company before going into the more lucrative shipping business during WW2. He was a millionaire by the age of 25 and had business relationships in countries around the world. Prince Rainier and Aristotle Onassis had a complicated relationship. Both Prince Rainier and Aristotle Onassis held high levels of power in Monaco. Unfortunately, they had differing ideas of the direction the country should be heading. Rainier wanted to fully develop the tiny principality into a wide range of commercial properties, but Onassis wanted to cultivate the image of Monaco as a Disneyland-esque playground for the wealthy. The two were bound to butt heads, and they continued to struggle for the power to guide the nation. However, in 1964, Prince Rainier regained control of the Société des Bains de Mer, and Onassis all but fled Monaco. Onassis was the big brother of Grace and Prince Rainier's wedding. It was widely known that Aristotle Onassis was the man who orchestrated Prince Rainier's search for a wife. He was involved from the beginning and was said to have overseen all of the details when it came to the planning of the wedding. When the big day came, he watched it all unfold from the deck of his yacht. The wedding was a who's who of America's wealthiest and most famous citizens. Just as Aristotle Onassis had planned, the wedding of Grace Kelly and Prince Rainier was a true media spectacle. There were 1,800 photographers and reporters waiting for the future Princess Grace when she arrived from America for the wedding. The April 18, 1956 event has been described as one of the earliest cases of media overkill, watched by an estimated 30 million people. The wedding consisted of a private religious ceremony and a separate, more public civil ceremony. The civil ceremony was attended by 3,000 of Monaco's citizens, and the religious ceremony was attended by 700 guests. Those guests included American royalty such as Conrad Hilton, Ava Gardner, and Cary Grant. Grace Kelly's father paid a dowry of million to the royal family. Grace's father, Jack, was a self-made man he had begun as a bricklayer, then earned his fortune as a contractor. Grace herself had had a successful, though as yet short, career as an actress by the age of 26, and had money to her own name as well. When Grace became engaged to Prince Rainier, she and her family were told that she would need to pay a dowry of million. This reportedly upset her father at first. He claimed my daughter doesn't have to pay any man to marry her. He was right, Grace broke off an engagement in order to marry the prince to fashion designer Oleg Cassini, pictured above. However, the dowry was paid in the end. Monaco was nearly broke. It helped get the country back on track to becoming a small yet wealthy nation built on gambling.
It has even been said in multiple biographies that Grace paid for half of the dowry herself. The other half was drawn from her inheritance so that she wouldn't be taking money from her siblings. Right after meeting her future prince, Kelly went home to star as a princess in a film. For the 1955 Cannes Film Festival, Grace Kelly went back to America to shoot a movie called The Swan in which she coincidentally plays a princess. There are many other connections between the film and Kelly's real life, for example. With publicity working overtime going both ways, the premiere of The Swan was delayed until the wedding day of Grace and her real-life prince. It was a huge publicity stunt for MGM, but also added to the hype that Aristotle Onassis was creating for the wedding and Monaco itself. Grace and the prince were set up at a photo shoot in Monaco. In 1955, Grace Kelly attended the Cannes Film Festival. While there, she received an invitation to attend a photo session with Prince Rainier at the Royal Palace of Monaco. The meeting almost didn't happen, since the prince was so late that Kelly almost left. Luckily, he caught her just in time and the two had a chance to get to know each other and explore the palace grounds. Romance, though staged, took off from there, with the prince visiting America soon after. Marilyn Monroe was also considered for the role of princess. Selecting a person to become the future princess of a country, even a tiny one like Monaco, was no easy task. One choice for the literal role of leading lady was Marilyn Monroe, but she didn't quite fit the bill. For one thing, she was already in a relationship with Arthur Miller. She also, according to producer Robert Evans, didn't know where Monaco was on the map. Grace Kelly was another clear front runner, and even though she won the title, there were doubts at the beginning of the process. Robert Evans, with whom she had an affair in 1950, wrote a scathing summary of why he thought she was a poor choice for princess. Our Serene Highness was well known in Hollywood for playing summer camp with most every leading man she flipped with. There was a microscope on earth powerful enough to find a virginal spot on her soon-to-be royal anatomy. Anastasi's business ties to Monaco ran deep. After the Societe Monde gasped to banks at Demetox, Prussia went bankrupt in the early 1950s, control went to Aristotle Onassis. More than half of Monaco's wealth was tied up in the business, which oversaw a casino, several hotels, and various tourist attractions. Most of Prince Rainier's personal wealth was also tied up in the business before it went under. Onassis believed the right bride could boost Monaco's tourism. Onassis believed the right bride could boost Monaco's tourism. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.